Acknowledge me. <laughs> you just made the list. I am the B E S T. I'm better than you, and you know it. Damn. Welcome back to Down Under the Map podcast here in Madison Square Garage around the pool table of relevancy. To my left, Mr. Daniel Danielson. To my right, Raddy Roddy Reese. I am Booker Ted. Please make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment on this video and check us out on X, Instagram, Spotify and YouTube. But you're probably already on YouTube because that's where we usually post to first. So yeah, welcome. Correct. And welcome back to another episode of Down Under the Map podcast where we talk all things wrestling. Nice hat, Ted. Thank you. Yeah. Nice, nice hat, Dan. Nice no, hat. Yeah, I'm wearing like <laughs> the cool kids he's do. He's too cool, man. Look at him. That's what happens when you have a when you have a young boy. You're trying to stay relevant, stay cool. Oh, and yeah. then if I go like just slightly, yeah, yeah. is it the different? Is that how it works? Or do I? You're full size. No, you keep yours straight. Oh right, yeah. yeah I see. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, Teddy's the straight. Three monkeys. <laughs> I get it. All right, fair enough. <laughs> we are three monkeys. Um, so, but yeah, we all, we, we probably need to get some more colored shirts, boys. I do agree with that. I don't know. It's a bit, uh, a bit one-toned. Yeah, a little bit. Here. That's right. Shows off my very pink sunburn <laughs> from outside. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. We're here to talk all things news and rumors for the week, and there is a lot to cover. Um, we did have a game to play, but we're actually going to put that up in a separate video. So look out for Dan's game that he's got for us in the separate video that we're yes. going to do. So make sure you check it out. What's it called, Dan? What's it called? Give the people some clickbait. Uh, Deaf Rebel Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see if you can tell which song this is. Fantastic. <laughs> so go and check that out. Oh, go and check that out. We're going to try and separate it. And, uh, for those of you who want to see the game, um, cause there's a lot to talk about. So we don't want to take up too much time. We've yeah. got the hour there. We want to try and fit everything into um, we are so close to Perth. We, 10 days until we land in Perth. And it's now 13 days until Chamber. Oh, How exciting. Shirt. Look at this shirt, baby. We're all wearing that look one, this right? Shirt. Yeah, we, yeah well, that's all, the plan, right? Yeah, yeah. That's no, the just, plan. Yeah, the only, look, the only other thing I was thinking of potentially um, was to wear my Stone Cold shirt. And to wear these, actually, these jean shorts that I've got. Yeah, your jorts. Go, go to the green shed and see if I can find some uh, knee braces. Yeah. That have been weird. Get, a, get a beige uh, swimming cap and then yeah. draw the bottom of my goatee and go with Stone Cold. But, you know. I think the mummy on top shirt. Let's go fine. with mummy. Yeah, yeah, let's just, go with mummy. We bought matching shirts for a reason. <laughs> That's very true. We should stick with that. And that We're going to have Lockie's matching shirts and matching hats. Yeah, we will. Mm. Yeah. But make sure you look out for us in Perth. Hit us up if you're going to be there. Love to come and talk to you guys about how you feel about the chamber and about wrestling in general. So if you'd like to get, we've got those new microphones that we've got to test out. Oh, so yeah, fantastic. feel free to hit us up. Let us know where you're going to be hanging out. I'm sure we'll probably see you around near the stadium at least on the day. Um, but, uh, oh man, I, I can't even talk about it enough. Like I'm just looking forward to the whole thing. Um, even more, like the wrestling more than the quokkas, man. I know you're excited about the quokkas. Oh, I'm looking forward to just the holiday. Yeah, yeah. Like going the other really side of the country, going on really a holiday. Never for been a to week. Perth either. Never been to Perth. Yeah, I mean, so twenty years. Bucket list oh, you've been there before. Nineteen ninety nine. What a year it was. Because I, I remember so... watching the St George versus Melbourne Storm in a real grand final in a hotel in Perth. Yeah. Don't know why. That's Don't one of my bring core that memories. grand final up, core bro. Memory, it's a core memory, core but that's memory. Yeah. last time I oh, remember. Oh, it's a core being... memory, all right. Yeah. I remember that coat hanger like everyone else does. <laughs> Yes. Oh, jeez. No, that, you're right, Reese. We're super excited, man. Seriously, 10 days. It, it's We're going to wake up all of a sudden and we're going to be flying out and going, oh, shit, we're in Perth. We're here. Yeah. What do we do now? I'm just going to be on the lookout for Cody Rhodes the whole time, just walking around. No, you're not. You're on the lookout for mummy. Okay. Don't There's... even. Don't, you're, you're on mummy I'll, watch. I'll look out for fucking anyone. Man. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Anyone. Any of them. Any of them. I'll, I'll do what you didn't do and I'll ask Bobby Lashley for a picture. Yeah, yeah do it. We've got to do it in our down under the mat hats though. Yeah. That's what we've got to do. Get that plug. So, no, nah, super excited. Very, very, uh, I can't even think of words to say. I'm so excited about going to Perth. So, that's, this will be Dan when he meets mummy. Hey, So, anyway. I'll take it. It's probably fair. I can't blame you, really, dude. Well, um, I'll probably be the same. I think we all will. Let's be honest. Um, so, if we jump straight into the news, we'll try and go through uh, some of the international news before we get over to the WWE Let's leave stuff. the big stuff to last. Yeah, let's leave yeah. it to last because there's a lot to talk about there. 
Uh, stardom. We've seen the news there about Rossi Ogawa. Yeah. Big news, huh? So on the way out. I think that there's lots to this story. Um, obviously, people that are better understanding Japanese wrestling probably know more than us. But I think the key yeah. points to it is that him leaving, it's kind of almost leaning towards that the company may or may not fold because a large portion of the talent looks like the ones that will follow Rossi, yeah. not so much stay at Stardom. Yeah. Um, that's also talk- For those who may not know, Stardom is the all-female wrestling yes, company in Japan. In Japan. Yeah, so like Japan's yeah. three big ones, New Japan Wrestling, All Japan Wrestling, and Stardom. Yeah. That's the three big companies. Um, obviously, Kairi Sane returning to WWE at the end of the last year, she'd left Stardom. Rumours were because, like, she saw this happening, so mm. why, that's why she got out. Mm. Uh, Julia is very closely rumoured to come to either WWE or AEW. Mm-hmm. Um, she's holding off on that now just to allow this news to happen because yeah. she's trying to stay with stardom just to let them play the course while well, rossi the, leaves the report that i read about it was that she's going to be helping get rossi's new promotion correct up and off the ground yeah. and help before like, she goes star, star mm. power because otherwise it might uh, it might fall yeah 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 so it'd be a shame if it did very interesting news over in japan for that because obviously you've seen mm. we've talked about the last couple of weeks with um okada being a free agent uh, obviously, Will Ospreay finishes up with New Japan this weekend. So he starts with AEW as of next week. Yep. So there's lots of changes over there in, in Japan in terms mm. of the top level pro wrestling. Yeah. Interesting to see how that plays but, out. But the yeah. reason that he's on the way out, obviously, is because he's been accused of, you know, using the wrestlers there to try and cut deals to get them signed with bigger companies and taking a cut himself, yep. essentially. Yep. Which I mean, I, I find that a bit weird, though. Like, why is that a problem? Why is that a problem having a, a wrestling business like that where you're like, we are growing great talent that are going to be signed by bigger businesses? Like, is it because he was taking a cut, though? Is that the main issue here? Or I, th- well, I don't know. I don't know the details on that. Possibly. Yeah, 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 I mean, okay. look, I'm I'm a manager and I've said to staff that have wanted to leave, I'm never going to try and limit people's careers. Yeah. If you're going for bigger and better and greener pastures, then I fully support you. So in terms of him being a booker, if one of the people come up to him and says, I have an offer from WWE and he says, oh, how about I keep you here for whatever, like that may be career limiting. Mm-hmm. I think he's doing the right thing. If they've got big options to go to the US, to travel mm. overseas, to go to AEW, to do what they want, support them and yeah. say, do it. Um, and I think that it'd be the same if, I mean, smaller companies, like we talk about Slam and all those mm. sort of local companies and stuff, if they had people that were saying, oh, I want to go to stardom, mm. you shouldn't stop them because no. you know, you're going up the pegging rank. You're, you're making yeah. mm. your career bigger. It then becomes that tough business line of are you undercutting the business that's paying your checks by yeah. getting rid of all of your talent, making your business worse by making the talent bigger elsewhere? Yeah, but I guess, you know, I look at it and go stardom's never going to be, well, not in – you know, any re- like near time is not going to be the size of WWE yeah, or no. no, it's pretty know, big it, in Japan though. It, it is, it's huge in Japan. But you know, how do you get people from overseas watching it? Well, if if we as WWE viewers or AEW are watching it and go, oh, that person came from Stardom. That person came from Stardom. They're really good. Well, but then, I might go check out Stardom. Yeah. You know uh, what I mean? Like Asuka, uh, yeah, Kairi Sane, EO, Mariah May, um, a bunch of them have all gone through. Well, there Stardom. you go. Yeah. If they just advertise that a bit more, maybe we'll check it out. Anyway, look, it's it's, it's interesting. I'm sure we're going to hear more about it, but um, it'll be interesting to see if he turns up at other promotions. Nah, maybe he's going to start his own promotion. His own yeah. one? Yeah. Okay. It's already been heavily Keep an eye on that. rumoured and talked about in the well, Speaking case. of other people going out the door, yeah. Ray Scott big, D'Amour. Big news in the TNA world. Like, mm. This is huge. When I heard this report, I was just like, holy shit. Yeah. Like for him to get fired, let go. However you want to... And what, what is his official position? Uh, he was Demo? president of TNA. President of TNA. So okay. now we've had Anthony... I can't pronounce his last name, so I'm just going to... Ciccone? Okay. Sure. Yep. Good, yep. good try. So yep. he, that he's good. We'll the that. Anthem president of entertainment. Mm-hmm. So TNA slash Impact has been under Anthem for a while now. Same as like WWE's under TKO. Yeah, similar sort of situation. So mm. he's now come in because they feel like... from From the reports I've been reading, they feel like... There's not much more that Scott can do to help elevate TNA, which is kind of crazy to think about, mm. especially like with the boom that they've been having these last few months and like they're now in a bit of a resurgence. Yeah. To have him go, he's been such a crucial piece of that I, TNA impact. What, what got me with this was 
I know like Scott's been around TNA for 20 years or whatever, all through the whole yeah. AJ, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, like the peak TNA, he was there. Um, his promo after that Will Ospreay, Josh Alexander match, where he said TNA is back and how he thanked the crowd and he, he was pretty much crying in the ring. The passion that bloke had yeah. for TNA and for them to fire him, mm. Yeah, I just well, I can't fathom that. But I think the thing as well with that, when you talk about the passion, we've seen the passion of the wrestlers and their response yeah. to him being fired. Yeah, and I don't know how you're going to get growth in a business if even a quarter or half your wrestlers are annoyed at you firing the current well, president. What's funny to me too is how quickly that news got leaked to the wrestling media. Very quick, wasn't it? Someone with within TNA was on that phone call called up Fightful and called up Dave Meltzer and said, Straight hey, away. here's exactly what yeah. happened. When you had the Kevin Dunn call, when you've had, obviously WWE's had plenty mm. of internal talks around all these Vince McMahon stuff. That hasn't leaked. No. This, this was immediate. Stuff straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are not well, happy. I think considering all the positives that we've seen in the last yeah. few weeks about TNA, right? Yeah. The fact that the name change and the um, partnership with WWE with, you know, Jordan Grace coming over. Yeah. Um, and then they signed Nick Nemeth, they signed Mustafa. Like, what? they had all these oh, great cool. positive moves. Yeah. And, the, you know, the matches that they had as well. Yeah, it's, right? been, it's been good product. All, yeah, all in a really very good. short period of time. Like, yeah. you know, we're looking at it going, oh, my God, they're going after AEW here. For this to happen, it was kind of like the well, complete opposite of what anyone is the, expected. The, out the of initial, like, reasoning behind this decision from the first few reports that I've read about it is because... As I mentioned, like they don't see TNA going anywhere with Scott still at the helm. Yeah. They want to bring someone new in to try and tweak the product mm. to take it to another level. Yeah, you just shift him. Don't fire him. Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly that's what, what I was thinking. Rough, yeah, shift actually, him. Like, um, maybe take more of the corporate stuff off yeah. him. Make, make, it, make him head of talent relations. Talent like make relations, him a head of talent. Like, yeah. Booking, like whatever. Because I've heard um, a lot of the stories and rumors around a fact that Scott essentially was trying to spend too much money. And Anthem didn't want him to keep overspending because yeah, he was okay. he wanted to buy. He bought Nick Nemeth. He wanted mm. to buy. As soon as everyone was free on the market, he wanted to spend money and they didn't want him to. I also heard there was a story, uh, was it three years ago, when Braun Strowman was first released. He yeah. wanted to hire Braun and they've got their pay-per-view called Bound for Glory. Mm. He wanted to call Braun it Braun for, for Glory. Glory. And bring in Braun Strowman, yeah. but Braun's offer was in the millions, and they yeah. wouldn't pay it. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it seems like part of the the conflict between Scott and Anthem has been him wanting to, well, to I spend guess, money to make money, and they're like, "We don't want you to spend money. We, we just, just want, want you to make, make money. money." Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, look, it just as rough. I said before, uh, I found it very interesting considering all the positive news that's been coming out of TNA. I, I think I think this caught a lot of people. By and surprise. to be fair, the timing of it too around what's happening in WWE with, you know, mm. their president uh, and how bad that is, why would you jump in and have your company have a – it's not a similar story. I'm not comparing the Nowhere, two. Nowhere, nowhere not near, even close. Yeah. But why would you throw your business down that same path if we now got a new chairman, we're going to do different things, we're going a different path? Yeah. Like it's just – it's really weird timing for me. Mm. I don't get it. I kind of do, but kind of don't. I, I, I'm, I'm a it's fence not, sitter it's here. Not I'm the a time fence sitter. To try and make money now. It's the time to increase your brand. Yeah. yeah. Pro wrestling at the moment, I think this is the peak of pro wrestling. Mm. We've said it for a while now. Like, it's peaking. The eyes on WrestleMania, mm. the eyes on AEW, the eyes on TNA have never been more now than they have been in ages. Why take a back step? Well, maybe that's why they look at it and go, "Now's the time to really go for it and get that growth." I no, think that's what someone's hopefully. thinking. I also there. read another report that Scott actually tried. Outright purchasing impact. Oh, oh himself. Like, I think it was like three, four years ago. So maybe he was seen as the backing threat. of a bank, like a major United yep. States bank. Yep. And Anthem wouldn't let him. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. Okay. Well, we'll wait and see what happens with that and yeah. uh, how much of an effect it has on TNA, especially with its you know, televised product anyway in the coming weeks. Yeah. Uh, but jumping over to AEW now, and obviously there hasn't been. AEW's taken very much a backseat recently with all the stuff that's happening with WWE yeah. especially. I think most other promotions, we don't see as much with everything that's happening. Uh -huh. um, but obviously, Tony Khan had a big announcement. Oh, we all God. love his major announcements. About major announcement of announcing this. something for three weeks away. Well, oh, the one, show in Boston called Business Time. Big business. Big business, is it? Business time? Big business? Whatever. In, in, in Boston, which Boston. Wonder who's in, in an up. advert mm. is spelt with... Two S's. Yeah. Two dollar signs. signs. 
Look, I think it's pretty obvious now that she's yeah. turning up at AEW. She hasn't turned up at WWE. Uh, reports are online that she's actually been getting paid by... By she, you do mean Mercedes Monet, right? Just yeah, sorry, to... Mercedes <laughs> Monet. She's Jeez. been getting paid by AEW now for like four or five months. So obviously Tony Khan's been paying her good money to not go back to I, WWE. So. I just hope that they do better by the women's division. Book her yep. well. So, and not just have her be another... Collision has two women's matches waste. on it tonight. Two. Yep, they've doubled it. Two ma- two matches. Wow. Okay. I think they're 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 teeing it up. This is kind of what they did too with um, is it the final the first dance, which was the CM Punk show when he returned to AEW. They held it mm-hmm. in Chicago. Yep. They called it the first dance, and they did like weeks long worth of like people calling out things things from Punk's promos and stuff. Yeah. Putting up crosses on the stage. Like they never said CM Punk until he showed up. Yeah. Watch for the next couple of weeks in AEW. There'll be boss, boss signs. Yeah, everything there'll, be, there'll be yeah. money things thrown around. Like he's gonna lean into it. Yeah. Um good. But mm. like yeah. the funny part to <clears> me was that this isn't a big announcement that you've got to show in. A big announcement is hi, we've signed Mercedes Monet, she's debuting in three weeks. Yeah. Cool. Or six weeks or however it is. Yeah. Not hi, we're doing a show in Boston. Which was already spoiled by the Twitter account for the Boston TD Garden that announced that morning. Yeah. Hey, we're having Dynamite show up. Uh, I just. Oh, I look, dude, it's hard though because, like, I kind of feel for him a little bit because um, you look at it and you go, well, he's got to delay it because, as I said, if you announce something, no one cares right now. You know, someone yeah. slapped another dude, and it's <laughs> millions of people have watched it online. Um, you know, it, it's. There's a part of me that feels for him, but I feel like they should have pulled this trigger like a month ago. Yeah. I think it's too late. It's too late. They should have pulled the trigger already. I think I think Tony was playing coy with the let them think she'll show up in the Rumble and that'll give me extra press rather than him coming out flat. Because if he came out when he did sign her on January 1 or whatever, said we've signed Mercedes, she will debut later this year, none of the stories would be that Sasha's going to show up in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. So but what, what, he what, then doesn't get the the, the rub of, yeah. oh, guess what? We signed her instead of you did. Ha, suck it. I feel like it would have been better off announcing before the Rumble that uh, she signed with AEW and she have her turn up. I think that would have been bigger, personally, because uh, then you go, oh, crap, she isn't with WWE. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Interesting to know. But the other stuff about AEW. Not everything's bad. No, not everything's bad. The rest uh, of good. Sting and Darby Allen are your oh. new AEW Tag Team Champions. <laughs> After beating Big Bill and Ricky who's the Star- other boy? Ricky Stark. Ricky Stark. <laughs> who's the other boy? It was so telegraphed, man. Of course it was. Of course they're, it was. They're bro. undefeated in AEW. I know they have never was. lost. But a can match. I just say, did you did you see the spots with Big Bill and Darby from that match? No. Dude. Darby. I saw the, uh, Boss Band Slam. Yeah. Yeah. What that's does Aaron a, Corbin call it? Deep Six. Deep the Deep Six, six yeah. yeah. Um it Darby, was a great Darby spot. needs to be pushed to the moon. Dude. He is Before he so kills himself. <laughs> yes, he is so good. He is so, so good. And we were talking about this before. He could have an absolutely amazing match with Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe would throw him around and it would look mm. so good. Could you imagine Samoa Joe just walking away from a coffin drop? Yes. Just, That's exactly oh, what I was thinking of. What a spot. But look, the big thing about this match was not actually the fact that Sting uh, and Darby won tag titles, which you said to me, the rumors were online that Sting said he didn't want to do. Until someone said, hey, you know you're undefeated as a tag team. You probably should win these. Yeah, but I get yeah, why he doesn't want to because he's about to retire. He's like, why should I have these belts when everyone's going to know I'm going to drop them to someone because I'm about to retire? Yeah. But, but it's the AEW EVPs, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson. Oh, the oh, who came match. out all in white yeah. with matching white baseball bats yep. and attacked Derby and Sting post-match. And then got blood all over them. Uh, well, that because my first question was when we watched this, why are they wearing all white that's and then right. it became very apparent it was so Darby could rub his cut forehead all up and down them so that they could be in bloodied outfits. And they wore it on Rampage too. They had a tag, a squash match on Rampage against two local Phoenix talents. Came out in the same suits. The blood would have looked even more epic if they weren't so far on the orange meter. Oh, I made fake the fake tans. Tans. <laughs> So bad. <laughs> If they'd come out in their normal should white we, skin. Should we change that poster and put them on the yeah. orange? Yeah, we should actually. We should. We should the put young the uh, young bucks on the orange meter sign. Um, so, look, it's obviously telegraphed that um, Sting and Darby are going to defend those titles against um, young, the bucks. young Bucks. At Revolution. At Revolution. Revolution, yeah. They've yeah. already said it. But, look, so. I, li- I like the story. I like that you, mm. you're building the EVPs up as I think it's quite apt that you're getting a corporate 
heel tag team taking on, you know, the fan favorite. Yeah. Isn't that similar to like a storyline from the other company with a corporate Don't know what you're talking person about. that's on the Are board? you trying to steal the whole South Park? Simpsons did it. <laughs> Simpsons did it. Don't know. Don't know what you're just, talking about, man. Just very oh, convenient yeah, timing, I think. Um, Dude, steal with pride, all right? Steal with pride. The other thing from AEW, there's, there's two other things I want to talk about quickly. Um, on the, the shit scale for AEW was... I don't think... We, I thought we weren't being negative anymore. We're I not calling we it the... We've, look, we've stopped the mud show segment of the we week. Did. We That's did. That's the we first time that, that, that word's come up for a while, actually. So, yep. It was beginning to get a bit tough. It was just yeah. too much AEW. Yeah. Um, the biggest story from last year through fall of AEW was MJF. Mm-hmm. And then the devil storyline. Mm. And then we had the reveal that it was Adam Cole. Yeah. Should have been the an Xbox. Yeah. Undisputed Kingdom. Uh that has very quickly, without MJF, gone into the mid-card vortex mm. because there was a six-man tag match with the Undisputed Kingdom against Orange Cassidy and the Best Friends on Rampage. It wasn't on Dynamite. It was great. There was, there was nothing. It was, and then they beat up yep. some dude in the back. I can't even remember who it was. I, I have no comment. Like, I don't even know what to this say This story yeah, okay. jumped yep. the shark and it is gone horribly now. I don't think Especially they with Adam Cole it. injured, like, yeah. It looks so pathetic having him there with his crutches. And no, his he's in a wheelchair now. Oh, he's in a wheelchair. They're using Roddy's wheelchair for him. Oh, man. Adam! Adam! Well, look, in good news, and this was one that you were really hyped about. Yes. Because you were watching it, was Swerve versus Hangman. And this is not that horrible death match that we all cringed watching. This is their Which most some people match. had as their like best match of the year. Mm. But this match was to see the number one contender for the AEW world title to face yes. Samoa Joe, yeah. Very correct. So it opened Dynamite. Yep. So it kicked off. And I think we've I've talked about this with your AEW mates, with Ryan and Joel. Yep. That the best part of AEW is what happens between the ropes. Yep. Oh, don't and doubt so that. And so they started Dynamite with number one contenders match, 30-minute time limit, swerve, hangman. Brilliant. They mm. did all the good spots. They... There was Buckshot Lariats. There so was Hangman was already the number one contender, right? No, there was no number one there contender. There was not. Oh, okay. Hangman right. was number one on the rankings. Right. Because okay. oh, yes. they brought the back rankings. the rankings. That's right. Because yes. they're four. Well, actually, no, yes. I think Swerve was. No, I, I don't know. Either way, they were both four and zero this year. Mm-hmm. But I think Swerve technically should be above him because he won the death match. Yes. Technically. But, but I don't know Hangman did was. drink his blood, which yes. means he owns him. So. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Whoa. Can't talk about white people oh, only no, black no, men no, anymore. Stop where you're okay? going. Go. Jesus. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, so anyway, really, 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 really good match. Absolutely recommend watching it. Yep. Um, they had lots of really close spots. They they did a really good storyline too. In that, what I think is amazing with what they've done is Swerve three or four months ago when they did all this stuff was ultimate heel. He went into Hangman's house, cut a promo on his sleeping child, like threatened to kill his family. Swerve was the worst person in the world. Hangman, ultimate babyface, right? By the end of this match, Hangman is the bad guy. Swerve is the good guy. They did a double. They did a double turn. Wow. The crowd, well, the crowd's been behind for Swerve for so long now yep. anyway. So. Yeah, he should have been face. Yeah. But, but the way this match went down, there was lots of finishing spots. It was all very, very good. Essentially, we got to five minutes left. Yep. They kept pulling more stops out. They went through a table, swerve stomps. Uh, ended up hitting the last call, his kick, mm-hmm. to Hangman. Um, but he, he was playing a knee injury throughout the whole match. So he couldn't quite get there in time. He got there for the pin. One, two, mm. meh. Timer out. Time I love draw. when they do that. But it actually is in a match that means <clears throat> something, which is cool. Yeah. yeah. So Because I know they've done it a couple other times before. Yeah, I think Hangman the- actually was in, it was with Daniel Bryan. Yeah, there's been. Yeah. I think I saw a meme online over the last couple of days. I think there's only been eight or six time yeah. limit draws in AEW yeah, okay. history. Yeah, but this was this was time to Beverly, and then this is when they they fully executed that double turn. Was that Swerve got the mic afterwards and said, "I can beat you five more minutes." Give me and five the crowd wants minutes. to see it. They five want to see that it. match. Yeah, and Hangman gets the mic and says, "Ha, huh, no, you had to beat me to be number one contender. You couldn't beat me. You're not getting it." Walks off. There you go. Boom, There's your double done. turn. Then Tony says, or um, Shivani says, Tony called me and said, it's now triple threat for the main event at a revolution, which is probably That's the cool. match everyone wanted. That's cool. Um, and it will be a banger match. When's the revolution? 4th of March, the week okay. after Chamber. Okay. Um, so, yeah, like 
very, very good match. Yep. Very, very good way that they've, again, listened to the crowd, mm. turned the characters the way they should have. Yep. Booked a really good thing for the main event. So AEW, when you you got your stories right, you're good. The rest of your show is garbage. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Look, that look. It's making me really keen for Revolution, though. To be honest with you, like, that match. Because the, the fact that well, the fact you got to get Sting yeah. match that match, like just for those two, I'd be like, I'll tune in for that. I assume they're going to do Tony Storm versus Johnny Bryan. And obviously, well. Mercedes will be there by then. Did you see that picture that they uploaded this week of their face off? Mm. It's got a lot of, a lot of. How, how do I put this? Yeah, quietly. Tre- yeah, tread lightly here. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I, I can't function very well. I've been in Sydney drinking for the past two days at Clockage, <laughs> so brain's not working. Have another can, mate. Yeah, have another can. No, another can. no. That, oh, come I'm, on, I'm saving that for tomorrow for Super Bowl Day. Maybe we need to trademark some down on the mat shirts with have another can. <laughs> we can I'd be that. down for that. <laughs> Reese, have another can. Yeah, I, can. I think the... the what, what, what day is Revolution on for us? Is it on a Sunday? It's on a Monday. Oh. oh. Why? Oh. Sun, Sunday pay-per-views for the US. Here's me being like, it oh, was like, let's, let's do a live stream of Revolution. But no. I can't take the Monday off work three weeks no, in a row. No. <laughs> yeah, I think we're not down for that, bro, unfortunately. Um, okay, oh, well. well, I'll still watch it. It just means it's going to be after maybe, work. Maybe you can do some quick recording reviews by yourself. Oh, everyone wants to see me. Whether the I've, been, I've been doing some solo TikTok stuff. Lately. I have seen that. Check out the TikTok uh, TikTok channel. I haven't mentioned it on here. We've got to put it onto the... I've, um, I've got double digit the likes, there. man. Oh, hey, that's a win. Dude, that's, that's a, a win. win. That's a win. That's a win. We're getting more and more subscribers on the channel. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment on this video. Yeah, I think we... Like, last time I looked, we bumped up to like 67. Yeah, so yes, we have. We have. Right, when we hit that triple digits, free hat for someone. Free hat. Ooh, free free hat. hat. Sure, I'm happy to, to sponsor. We've got to keep a hat. Keep one of those hats. Keep a hat. Free hat. No, yeah. 100th subscriber gets a gets free hat. a free hat. I don't know how we find out who the 100th <laughs> subscriber was. <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll figure we'll figure it out. Don't worry about the logistics. We'll sort it we'll out figure it out. Yeah. All right, so. Well, we're moving on to Rock. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, we're moving on to WWE. Okay. Are we? Do we have anything else from anywhere else? Well, I, I just want to touch asking. on one little bit of news thing first. Is it yes. LA Knight getting married? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's about Ava. The Rock's yeah. daughter. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is disgusting. Oh, yeah. Guys. I put a TikTok out yeah. about this because I was actually like really mad about it. After the fallout of SmackDown last week where The Rock came out and hashtag stole Cody's moment. Yeah. Ava was receiving death threats yeah. and being bombarded on her social media pages and By she has now since deleted yeah. her that's what the, X account the poor, because of it. That's the poor portion of the Cody Cryberries. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that's absolutely disgusting. Guys. Oh, it's dude, like, it's, not it's not on. It's not acceptable. Unfortunately, that that's the dark side. She of literally has nothing to do with that fandom. situation yeah. whatsoever. Leave There's no right. reason why I have she should have got any of that. She gets involved though. I have but you know what? But you know. But you know what? Now, after everything that's happened, don't those people look stupid? Yeah. You know, Cody Crybaby's got what but they just, want. But just, just don't like. I can't believe people get that. Like we get passionate like, about yeah. it. Yeah. But there, there's, there's, there, there is a certain line that you don't cross, and that was 100%. way over the line. Hundred percent. Look, I've seen it. A lot online mm. through even like sports stars, like when people put bets on a try score or a touchdown score. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my multi so didn't ridiculous. get up. Fuck you, go kill yourself. No, that's that's not the player's fault. Don't no. ever tweet that no. to people. No. no. Like just... if you made a, a decision yeah. on what you wanted or you bet mm. on or whatever you tipped or something, that's your choice, right? Yep. From venture frustrations through social media all you want. Don't mm. tag the people in it because they don't need to know. Dude, it, it's you, know, you know, unfortunately, man, it actually happens a lot. And I know it this really is a because I, I have a, a, a lady that I know through work and her son has played in the NRL. Yep. And I've spoken to her multiple times because we talk about, the, talk about the footy. And he himself has also been yeah. a, a recipient of death threats because of missing a try We've, or a tackle. Him, yeah. And it's, it's horrible. Absolutely yeah. horrible. So if you're one of those people... Stop it. it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I had the dramatic pause. Please stop. Just don't. Guys. Please stop. You know, Life's go, not that Buy bad. yourself a punching bag and some gloves. Go out to the garage, into your Madison Square garage, and just into the punching bag. Or stand in front of a mirror and do it. Beat yourself up. Or like, <laughs> share, subscribe, and do your random comments in our comments thing, man. Yeah, I don't care, shit. but far out. It, you're right, Reese. Like yeah. it just gets it gets too no. much, man. Like I think most people, ninety nine point nine percent of people agree that that is just absurd. But it only it only takes that one or two yeah. to to do something stupid and ruin it's it for everyone else. Everybody. So, but speaking of that, we jump into WWE, who are absolutely dominating news at the moment. Ooh. So, obviously, we can't recap everything on the <clears> shows, <throat> right? No, we have half. An but hour. we'll talk about the major bits that sort of. 
tie into this as well. And I think mm-hmm. on Raw, uh, obviously the segment with Seth and Cody, uh, which was very much hijacked by the audience. But and I, Drew McIntyre. And Drew McIntyre. But obviously with the way that Drew and Seth and the commentary were reacting to what was being said, it was obviously discussed beforehand that let's not stop the crowd. If they go for it, mm-hmm. just let them go. go with it. Don't Don't ignore it. Don't pretend it's not happening. And I think the genuine response you got from Seth Rollins when the Rocky Sucks chance was there. I didn't expect he that. He did not expect that. Yeah. Mm. That's genuine. Like, he really didn't. That that whole segment like that. was great. I love the fact that they blew balls just with Cody. Mm. They put him out there. They didn't let him say anything. No. Um, Drew has been on fire on Twitter. His T-shirt <laughs> with Punk's <laughs> the best. It's out telling like, about working his fact, tricep. And the fact that he's mentioned now, I think it might have been on SmackDown it actually was, he mentioned yeah. it, but we said he's not getting any of the, <laughs> the royalties. royalties for it. He is really, he's kind of like our truth if we took our truth seriously at the moment. <laughs> um, Drew, Drew's it's doing brilliant. the best work of his career. He's oh, so he's good right fantastic. now. But that, I really liked the, the promo that they did. I thought it was fantastic. Um, as I said, because they actually went with what the crowd was doing, they weren't ignoring it. It, it made it awesome. Yeah. And then, obviously, afterwards, they must have had a meeting and went, remember that press conference we're doing? Yeah. We're going to switch, switch things up. Let's what? switch no, things I mean, up. I reckon we got worked for sure. No. They, I reckon oh, we got worked for sure. They'll make you sure. think that, but I think they had their options open and they looked at it and went, which one of these options is the best Nothing to go for now? Nothing was cemented. Yeah, no. Yeah, correct, correct. I think one thing to touch on from Raw, I can't even remember all the matches that happened. Mm. There was some stuff that was probably really good. Um, the main <laughs> event, though, with... Shinsuke and Cody. Mm. I don't think any of us wanted to see it again. No, nope. but they, that, that. they, it was a good match. Oh, 100%. And the way they made it into the um, cowbell match. Needed more cowbell. No, no cowbell match. They've what been doing they that on the live circuit. It's bull rope. It's, a, like, bull bull rope match. Uh, it's the same bull rope that Dusty had 30 years ago. Is it really? Does you keep a the rope around for 30 one. years? Um, look, it did look pretty old. <laughs> so that cowbell looked what pretty What I loved legit. with it was I guarantee you that this is booking from Cody yeah. and, and Triple H and Shin. To say, we can't have blood on TV. We're not allowed blood, mm. right? It's PG. Well, it's not necessarily PG year up, but we can't do blood in the main event. But how can we make it look coloured? How about we missed you early on in the match so you're covered in red? And so it looked the whole match that it's Cody not. was having a bull road match covered in blood. It wasn't. It was the mist. Right. But yeah. it looked great. Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, that's a good point. I think that's what they did it With, for. Look, the other big thing from Raw, obviously, was that we had the announcement of Rhea versus Nia Jax is happening yep. at the Chamber. Mummy's always on top. Two so, Australian-born people fighting for a title. Which I didn't know that. So thank you again for I knew that more way back wrestling. Yeah, she was born in Sydney. Yeah. Way back. Yeah, I didn't know that. So there you go. I, I do really hope for our sake, the fans' sake, and mainly for Nia and Rhea's sake that they actually close the show. I, I don't think it'll happen we, now. I think when we talk a bit more about what's happening, but I really hope they do because I'd really love to see 40,000 people chanting, we love mommy and mommy probably not being able to control her emotions. Um, and just shed a I tear. think they might. Shed one purple tear. I think you open with the men's chamber. Yep. Get everyone right involved. Have a couple of matches. Have the women's chamber. And then the winner, presumably Becky, let's assume she's winning from based off what happened at that press conference, which we'll talk about. Um, and then you have her sit ringside and watch mm. the main event. And you watch Rhea and I and so you wins. And at the end of it, Becky well, walks in face off. There you go. I'm thinking maybe what we'll, before we get, because I like what you're cooking. Yep. But I think maybe we just put a pause on it because okay. I think maybe next weekend we'll record our predictions for okay. Elimination sure. Chamber yep. right That's before good. we go to Perth. Yeah. So, But I like what you're cooking. Okay. So hold on to that. Can we record it in Perth? Well, I think maybe before we get to Perth, because we're going to do a lot of other recording when we're that's, in Perth. So true. maybe before we get yeah. there, we'll do a... Keep your a, eyes peeled um, for lots of content over the next oh, 100%, weeks. man. Lots of interviews. I don't know what we're going to do with ourselves. Let's, let's just throw like everything on the YouTube. Just like sure. make a, a category course, man. for Hey, man, you got, you, got, you got double digits following on TikTok. Yeah, man. Let's go. I could, we can just live stream us walking into Perth on TikTok. We can. Why not? Let's live stream it. Just do it, man. Just do it. Maybe not the whole event, but, you know. Mm. Yeah. But, so... Anyway, yes, that's that was Raw. Yeah. Press um, conference. We go from nah. Raw, NXT. Do you want to touch on that quickly? Oh, Ven- yes. Vengeance Sorry. Day was spectacular. Yes. Yeah. That Vengeance was a really, was really, really, really good event. Really, really, really good. Um, the Dusty, the Wolf Dogs. Wolf Dogs, man. Wolf <coughs> Dogs on top. I called it. I you called did. it from the start of the damn tournament. Wolf Dogs to win, and they did it. Uh, they were great. Um, the Trick Mellow stuff. Trick Mellow's finally turned on him. Mm. Uh, that'll be a good storyline. 
Yeah. I heard someone it, saying, it was, I don't know um, where it was, that they wanted the, that Trick Miller match to go to WrestleMania. And I don't think it deserves. Uh, no offense. I don't think it deserves WrestleMania. What about a pre-show? It just no. It deserves the NXT stand deliver show. Like okay. that's your headline yeah. for your well, NXT. Well, WrestleMania weekend, I think, is probably yes. what they meant. Yeah, cool. No, no, they yeah. said WrestleMania, but it should headline. There, there right? it, is. it should be yeah. main event. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So like, but on NXT. That's from on. Vengeance Day. Just to quickly touch on NXT this week as well. They did develop that a little bit more. So Melo came out to open the show. Ah, uh, and said, "Yeah, not yet." Yeah. Yeah. Walked backstage. Later in the night, he came out, cut his promo while he was doing that. Did mm. the whole tricks music hit, but it was just a fake out to everyone, just to stir the pot. And then later, to close the show, he attacked Ilya Dragunov after his match with Dijak. So I saw some stuff before NXT this week that said that Trick and Mellow match should be for the title. Melo gets the title back in the coming weeks and then they and then fight faces. for the title. Dude, yeah, do, yeah, it. Do, it. do it, man. Let's stand and deliver. Do it. Free up Ilya to go to the main roster and beat Gunther at Bash in Berlin. Ooh. Oh, look, both of them are going to end up on the main roster sooner rather than later, I think. They're um, with Trick's response that he got from the crowd when he turned up for oh, that, for that yeah. 60 um, seconds. I actually saw something up. today. They threatened to cut the <clears> live show because everyone was chanting F you, Melo. Oh, in NXT. In NXT. Yeah, I did see that too. Yeah. They actually had to tell the crowd, like, please stop. Otherwise, we're going we're gonna to stop it. Yeah. So, interesting that they had to actually ask the crowd that. But I guess, like, what do you do, man? Yeah, NXT is loud, do? though. Like, it's, it's a smaller crowd. Like, mm. it's the same thing in Orlando every week. Like, it's the same yeah. people that show up. They'll, they will chant that. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> those are the, the, I wouldn't be shocked if some of those people in that crowd are the ones that actually... Death message, threats. yeah. Mm. All right. <coughs> anyway, yeah. moving on. Um, so, press conference. Press conference. Las Vegas. Really I love, big. I love the fact that the biggest story of the week for everything we're talking about is a press, press conference. conference. But they that's but the point, though. They did, they did so well. well. Now, number one, Big E, CM Punk, Brilliant. on the panel, loved it. Straight off Signing the bat, I saw great. them. I'm like, thank you, Big E. Can't get enough of you. CM I, Punk. I loved Punk being like, Seth Rollins needs to get his balls out of his wife's handbag and start punching more people. I don't care who it is. If it's a person, if it's your boss, the fact, start punching them. And I was like, yeah. The fact that he mentioned punching bosses. Exactly. I was just like. So good. Yeah. So good. But then also so Big E sort of saying, I'm only here to make sure that CM don't get Punk. Fined. Yeah, so he doesn't get fined. That was, uh, that was good. But look, they were brilliant. And I think that's the first time we've yeah. seen Big E not on like the bump on proper mm. WWE. TV. Mm. In I need to do more. Two years. Yeah. yeah. I really, really hope that either though I've I've heard and I would love to see CM Punk be the host of WrestleMania. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd Get be down for that. Him and Big E to do it. Both of them should be on pre-shows. I'd love to see them come to Chamber now because they've obviously still announced he was one of the big names with CM Punk was coming to the Chamber. Yeah. Bring him as a commentator. I was going to say there is talk that there's a good yeah. chance that he will end up on commentary. Actually, oh, well, I have seen that online. And the other option yeah. too is uh, NXT. So they've been rotating commentators. Why not? Um, uh, Book, Book is out having surgery. Oh, so hopefully shocky, he recovers. Quack, quack. Recovers fine. No quack. Punk, no yeet, no quack. Punk doing commentary on NXT. Why oh, not? brilliant. Oh, he brilliant. said he's wanted to work with NXT before. Mm. So Get him on that. Get him, him on pay-per-views. Yeah. He's, you're sure his arms injured and he can't punch people, but yeah. he's like, let him talk. Mm. He's so good at it. Well, what speaking he's about at. who also is so good at it, we had Triple H come out yes. um, and obviously did his usual spiel that he's quite good at, you know, are you ready, blah, blah, blah. Before doing that, did the, the hype up of this is a new WWE, this is mm -hmm. different. And I think that was a really good way to start the press conference because everyone sort of thought, oh, yeah, here we go. Like, is it going to be is it going to be anything good yeah. um, or is it just going to be the same old tripe that we've seen before. He also did tell the story of WrestleMania 1, which was a pay-per-view yes. main evented by a tag team, team match. match. Celebrity. A celebrity. With a Hollywood superstar. Tag yes. team match. That's a very key point, I think, to it this is. whole thing. Um, That's huge. And the fact that it was like watching this, I mean, it's a press conference that had a pre-show panel, which yeah. is crazy. <laughs> it had high, didn't quite sell it out, but it was in Vegas, Super Bowl week. Proper media was Didn't there. Didn't you say there was more people at the press conference than at AW Dynamite? I mean, don't fact check or it exactly, but <laughs> pretty sure it's accurate. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a huge crowd for a press conference. Yeah. And that whole like front media part, like there was people that I've seen that were there from, obviously Sean Ross Sapp was there from Fightful, Chris Levy was there, there was comicbook.com, there was ESPN, there was SportsCenter. Mm. Like, 
people were there to watch what happened. Yep. And WWE did not miss. Mm. I think this will become an annual thing. I think so. It I should. think it, like yeah. like the Hall of Fame, it'll become we'll we'll be looking forward to the WrestleMania press conference every year. Yeah. I think like it's gonna especially after how that panned out. Yeah. And like just the amount of different storylines they were able to work into that as well. Well, I guess let's let's, let's get into those, yeah. right? So the first person we actually had come out after Triple H was Bianca Belair, which was mm-hmm. interesting because she to set up her WrestleMania match. Yeah, but how? I think it was more. <laughs> I think it was more just to guarantee that she's going to be there. Obviously, they, they didn't allude to who. I think we all have a very big, big guess. hint and guess as to who it's going to be, but they didn't say but that. But pulling the, the trigger on everyone else, why not pulling on? Why is Bianca there then? Well, maybe because they're really not sure if it is going to be Jade. That's the only thing I can think of. The then, biggest then, reason then she was be, there. Why is she because, because, WrestleMania kick off event if she's not kicking look, off her match? Look, the biggest thing, obviously, is she had to mention her and Montez on, I, I get on Hulu. Yes. So that was obviously the big plug. I'm just very strong in the corner of hashtag we want Bailey. Yeah. I'm I'm surprised that they weren't there. And CM I'm very Punk, surprised. Like, CM Punk came out and said it too. Mm. Like if you saw his Instagram, he said that he really wanted to talk about Bailey, but everything else sort of took the time and they didn't get a chance to put respect on Bailey's name. Mm. I think I don't understand why you're doing a WrestleMania kickoff event and the one match you had already announced that was guaranteed for wasn't WrestleMania wasn't there, whether or not your point was, oh, well, we need to sell the other matches first because we know that's coming. Mm. They didn't even mention it. No, they didn't, which is interesting. Dead but shit. I feel maybe they felt like because Bailey and Damage Control are doing a really good job on the shows. They are, the story. yes. So they didn't really need the press conference, whereas some of these other stories that we haven't seen develop as much on the show needed that press conference to get us hyped for. Because obviously with Bailey choosing EO, that now means that Rhea needs an opponent for mm-hmm. WrestleMania. Which and this was awesome, right? She got great chance. Everyone the, loves o- the only slip up was the fact EO of Shirai. EO Shirai, yeah. which fair enough, she still has that name on social media. So <laughs> that's completely understandable. But Becky uh, coming out and interrupting, I think that is planting that seed. We all want to see that. She put an absolute banger of a match on with Charlotte last year. If her and Becky can do the same thing two years in a row with Rhea, I, I think she will. Because, I mean, we've talked about this on the podcast before. She's been had a lot of people fed to her that have not been necessarily up to scratch. Yeah. Becky is by far the best female wrestler in that locker room in terms of ability in the ring, on the microphone, I think all round. I think it's she is number one. On, that is no. very tough on Tegan no. Fox. No. <laughs> oh, come off it, mate. She's the shiniest of wizards, but I don't know about the shiniest on the mic. But what I loved was how she played in the whole, mummy's always on top, we are going to have to learn how to be a bottom because that's what happened when the man comes around. (laughs) And she played... She played with that line, great, man, of what you can so say good. on TV. It was it was perfect. And the face-off between the two of them, you know it's going to be a good one. Has, it, has it telegraphed in the Elimination Chamber for you guys too much? Oh, 100%. No. Well, no, in the sense 100%. of, yes, because Becky's going to win. But how does Bianca lose, I think, is what needs to be answered, which means who does she then face at Mania? Jade Cosso. Well, well that's Jade's, one of Jade's the not in the... At least no, like she's, she's not, not going to be in there. But remember that time Shawn Michaels popped up from under the thing? Yeah. Remember Super kicked a certain Logan dead Ball man? came out and cost mm. Seth a spot? Yeah, it's true. So I think that's where I'm more interested is what's going to like what's gonna happen to the person not winning. Because yeah. Becky, I don't yeah. think, is necessarily going to win clean. I think the problem sense. with it and what they've done is we we all knew it was going to be Becky Rhea, right? We all knew this they've was been teasing the plan it for, months. for months, right? It now means every other woman going in that elimination chamber is playing for second. Yeah. Like Liv Morgan's got her thing on revenge and what mm. she needs to do. You're not winning, sweetie. We know it. Yeah. Bianca's not going to win. Uh, who's Shotzi versing? Yep. Tiffany Stratton. Yeah. Tiffany Stratton's oh, going to get t- in there. Tiff will win, yeah. She'll have a really Tiffy great time, spot. Baby. She'll probably do Tiffy time. the prettiest moonsault ever off the top of the cage. Yeah. Fantastic. She's not winning. Like, I th- I think that they have to do a really good job of selling the other stories of the other women battling between each other mm. so that we're not just, oh, yeah, it's no one cares. Becky's winning this. I'll wait. 20 minutes till this finishes and wait till Becky wins and yeah. we're done. There's going to be some good storytelling for other be. stuff that goes. Yeah. And, that, and I think that's what's going to happen. But um, I seriously am telegraphing that for me, that might be the the match that steals the show. Uh, I'm pretty inclined to agree. The WrestleMania? Yep. It, it should I don't want to put that pressure on them, but from what we know from both of them, I just feel like there's a really good chance they, they can, can both be it. bring it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Needed. Give, look, you know what, man? Give them, give them whatever time they need. Don't give them a time limit. Just... Just go. 
Just go. Let's get an Iron Woman match. Oh, don't tease me. I oh. they, they did they did a half hour Iron Woman match in NXT. Yeah. If you don't want to give them the full sixty minutes, no, do no. a half hour one. I think you can do That's it. That's good. Can't do it at WrestleMania. The card's going to be yeah, too. Yeah, an stout. hour's a long time. Do it at the Backlash. WrestleMania Backlash. I like have that idea. Rhea retain mm. whatever, and then Becky's like, "No, give me another shot." But this time, mm. Iron Woman. Yeah, that's how you'd sell it. No, that's awesome. We're getting excited for it. <laughs> oh. So, what a year! Back to the press conference. It was very interesting because uh, we're sort of like, "Oh, who else are we going to have out here?" And then out comes Seth. Out comes Seth. And it's like, "Oh, this is a bit early." This amplifying. It's just twenty-five minutes to go. And obviously, the best part was. Oh, Cody, get out here, make your decision. Roman's music hits. Oh. Out comes Roman. And he's talking about how it's his choice and blah, blah, blah. Cody missed his mark. He now chooses Roman's The Rock to face him at WrestleMania. Out comes The Rock. And this is where they really let the crowd go again, right? Yeah. They didn't they, – and I think props to Rock for letting it happen yeah. as well and just sort of sitting back and going, no, no, let them chant, let them chant because this is going to feed into what I'm doing. And Rock was seen earlier on the Pat McAfee show uh, talking that about morning, the yeah. Cody crybabies. Yep. Oh, that shit was so good, man. And then said I, it in that I promo. I saw the, yep. that clip and I just cracked up. Yeah. And well, then I made a TikTok did it, about did it. it make you, did it make you feel like, oh, we're getting heel Rock. We're getting him back. Or were you not yeah. sure well, yet? Well, I, I just thought like he was really leaning into the character. I was like, that's for sure going to set up a match between the two at some mm. stage. Yeah. In the next couple of months. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> and then we, we got we got... We got the, the picture bloodline of tree. the bloodline tree, yes, which has also been a lot of talk. Wrestle yes, makes it wrestle talk. Wrestle talk did a whole video on it. Yep, um, I was just waving. Go away! <laughs> We're recording, <laughs> weirdo. Pikachu, I choose you. My Sitting child there eating cheese out of a bag. <laughs> bag of Teasing cheese. us with a bag of chips. Oh, God. Anyway, uh, yes, the bloodline video. So there was there was the wrestle talk guys. We're already mm. planning a full video on it. Go, I'll put the link in our YouTube as well. Watch their breakdown of it because they do a really good job of breaking down. Some of the relationships between like Peter Maivia, Rocky Johnson. It's a brilliant video. Um, and then all of the different cousins and yep. different things. You've got Rosie, you've got Amagi, you've got Yokozuna. The way all that ties in. And I think Rock, the way that he went and put this up on screen, said, I don't care if you don't like it, you have to respect it. Yeah. And the and way what, that he's heavily playing into the family. Well, and the way it went to, when you get to the Cody stuff. Yeah. Now, before we get there, though, the mention of the only... This is the big, the royal, the family. royal family of wrestling. That's when I, I as soon as a bit, heard oh, that. come on, man, yeah. here we go. It's on. Um, it's, it's a wild family. Like you go back and you look at some of the stuff between Rocky Johnson and Peter Maivia and how they sort of dated and uh, he dated his niece and then he was kicked out of the family for a little bit. Then he gave birth to the Dwayne and then they came back into the family and then all the different stuff with um, Seeker and... Uh, who were the, the Alpha. Wild, Alpha, the Wild Samoans, um, all the different stories for that. It's it's crazy. Like, you go watch mm. this video. It's very crazy to see how far that whole family and dynasty has come. This is long-term storytelling, isn't it? <laughs> if they play into it properly, yep. yes. Like, well, I think they are. You, they've, they've done it quite well with the tribal chief so far. Lean into it really mm. heavily now. Yeah. It's going to go. It's going to be good. Because exactly mm. like you just said, you've got the – Cody Rhodes' music says there's more than one royal family. Correct. Kind of got a well, but this like, and this was the odd thing, right? Because Rock came out yeah. once his name had been said three times, because you know that's the rule. I think yep. it was less than that. Let the crowd go nuts, and he said about you have to respect this, blah blah blah. And this, match and then him and blood. him and him and Roman did the the handshake. Yeah, got yeah. blood, right? Blood. We're gonna sort this out. Mm-hmm. Cody's music hits. He comes out. I oh, love. Oh no no no! You this don't get to choose. Bullshit. Yes, yeah, so I good. won the Royal Rumble. I'm getting to choose. And I thought this was brilliant by Cody. I think this really showed. Because I know sometimes people think he's overrated. I don't think he's overrated no, at no. all. I think he is one of the best. Um, and the fact that he, when he spoke about your your grandfathers would be ashamed. Before because we everyone invokes that. my father, I'm going to invoke that on you. And I thought that was really Roman literally talked shit about his dad. All the time. Just before mm. Cody made that comment, and then all of a sudden it's a big issue because Cody said that. But they'd that, be I guess that's the point. That's right? the point of the rule of the bloodline and the family. It's stupid. Yeah. No, it's, stupid. it's beautiful. He's Samoan. The it's the my main blood, thing, and I, I think you guys might be surprised to hear this. I actually really felt sorry for Seth because he became. Oh no, dude! He I'm, became I'm, very much a side note. Oh, absolutely. A footnote on that promo. Yeah. Mm. Two things to Seth though. I love the interaction between Seth 
and Roman mm-hmm. and the fact that Seth, I liked when oh, look, he turned he, up for he work. He turned up for work and then Roman said, oh, you turn up in your wife's shoes. Um, good lines. But I also love the fact that they've sort of still teased the point that Roman hasn't beaten Seth no. in a couple of years. No. And Seth knows it. Yeah. So, Seth's won by DQ. Yeah. So that is still on the table. When this all yeah. disappears and everything goes back mm. and Roman comes back to whatever normal wrestling he does, him and Seth can still have a really good program. And yep. I think keeping Seth there for that was good. He held his own. Yep. Yeah. And then at the end when this whole shit went sideways, Seth jumped in straight away. Yeah. And he got I broken. really like that. And he yep. said, you can't do this. This is bullshit, blah, blah. That was great. Because that now means he's important. Yeah. yeah, he put himself in the middle of this when he had to. Can, can I just say though, it's that, that this is where WWE definitely make their fans they treat their fans like dum dums. Because like even with the promo back on Raw, and I didn't touch on this before, but when Drew was having a go at um, Cody about his dad and stuff, and uh, and Seth goes, "Oh, you don't have to be a, such a, a prick, a yeah. prick about it." I'm like. Says the guy who came out dressed as <laughs> Dusty Rhodes, yeah. mocking him in front of Cody. But anyway. Um, look, I, I, yeah, I, I just still feel a little bit sorry for him because it's like it's kind of like a, an add-on. But how else do you do it, right? They I, had to they had to swerve to get Cody back into that with, main event. With so. how that promo ended up developing, I think like initially we thought that Seth was coming off a little bit worse for wear, but like with how it ended, I it think it's gone better. Propelled him, and up you more. you had to have him there. When Cody yeah. comes out and says, "I make the choice," you have to. Have yeah, Seth yeah, you can't not have him there because it's too to obvious. Make the choice yeah, between. exactly. Yeah. But I guess this is where now everyone's getting excited, right? Because it was announced later on. I know I'm skipping ahead a little bit because there was the slap from from Rock, which has got hundred million views They've plus now. It's, it's crazy, yeah. right? But now this is really, and this we've talked about this multiple times. Triple H has set it up for we really don't know which way it's going. Even though they did announce it's Cody versus Roman at Mania. Mm. As the main event. As the main event. The they've, they've set that now and said that's it. However, we're all like, but is that it? Is something no. else going to happen, mm. right? Absolutely something else. And obviously what we're hoping for, because we're going to be in Perth in 10 <laughs> times. Rock <laughs> 10 at time. Chamber. Is it going to be Rock and Cody at Chamber? Or is it going to be Rock and Roman versus Cody and Seth? At Chamber. Because yeah. I know Seth's injured, but if he's in a tag match, he's, he could be protected. I think he's said he's about three to four weeks away from wrestling. So I want maybe. that tag match at WrestleMania On as a throwback one. to the first ever On WrestleMania. On night one, Mania. you reckon? Yeah. Night one, have open a tag Open the match. show. Night one, open the show. With, with a tag match. So and, then, a throwback and then, to the first and ever then night event. two, you can still have yep. Cody finishing his story. So and they, I, think but I feel like junior. that tag match, that's mm. that's a WrestleMania match. And as much thing, as I'd want to see it at no, Chamber, no, no, I get you. that's a WrestleMania match. The that's good thing about two is you get both of the baby faces wrestling twice. Yeah, true. Roman does too. But like <laughs> it puts that <laughs> yeah. story on Seth and Cody that they've got Seth to back up the second night. Yeah. You've, got to, you've already got to go over the adversity to win your match and stuff. So Because, I mean, if you do that tag match at WrestleMania, you've still got your... Jimmy Uso, you've got mm. Solo, you've got whatever else. Other Who could also get involved in, in that match too, Absolutely. just FYI. To, so. to cover Roman and stuff so he doesn't mm. have to do as much work. You make it look like Seth and Cody struggle. Can they win on night two? Yeah. yeah. I, like, okay. I like the idea of that. Oh, There's so dude. much potential. It, one, The one story that I'd, I'd heard someone, I can't remember, one of the podcasters I was listening to, I thought this was a brilliant little touch. It won't happen. Mm. They're going to go with the whole Bloodline story, right? Um and how the rock's now like corporate rock and he's going to take over. And obviously we haven't really touched on the him and Triple H stuff just yet, but that yep. happened. Do you imagine if the rock starts pulling some strings as corporate rock and goes down and tells Ava in NXT, it's no longer called the Dusty Roads tournament. Oh. It's called the Rocky Maivia tournament. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's perfect. Like how's that as a stab yeah. straight into Cody? Well, and you've already, you've already touched on it, that's right? So because of this, because of everything that happened at the press conference, now they've got to look at, well, who's going to fight Seth for the World Heavyweight title? So it was announced at the beginning of SmackDown with, and I actually did like the fact that Nick Aldis and I agree, Adam Pearce yeah. were there with Triple H. Yeah. And I think they were on stage at the press conference too. I like that. Yep. They Perfect. all came out. Oh, as, when, they, when they skulked out, yeah. because they're like, this is all about to go. The way they did it, and it's like, oh, they were cooking. They were cooking. But now we've got all these qualifying matches for the Elimination Chamber, so we know there's a men's elimination as well yep. Yep. to see who goes to face Seth. Yep. Uh, there's only two people that we know that are in the match now, which is going to be Drew, who beat AJ Styles, yep. and also Randy, who, and you can ask Morgan, I nearly cried, uh, beat Sami Zayn because there was just a little part of me that really wanted Sami to be there. Dan um, made a really good point about that. You've now got a redemption story arc to try and get Sami into that match. Yeah, 100%. We, we've talked about a couple of options to get him in mm. there, but we might have to talk about that on our uh, elimination. I still want Sammy in Perth, though. Yeah, same. I, I want Sammy there. Please, man. He's been 
He's been the number one guy in 2023 for me in terms of just all round, like backstage promo in ring. Like I know Gunther ended up getting our number one, but in terms of most improved, oh, he head and shoulders above everyone else. He was amazing. Um, so hopefully he gets there. But now obviously there's that chamber match. Um, but Triple H very much importantly in this segment. Well, before that oh, segment too, the shade that he was throwing at the oh, back in that the segment. press conference after when they yeah. interviewed him. And he yep. said a few people went into business for themselves. was very WCW. Mm. Very, like, old school. And we had the camera shot because he was with, <clears throat> I can't remember which reporter it was now. No, um, can't remember. Kathy Maybe Kelly, one of them. It wasn't Kathy. It wasn't Kathy. It was one of them. them. And they had the camera very much set so you could see Roman and Rock coming from, from behind. behind. And, and we pointed this out. Rock actually steps in front of Roman. Because Roman was coming as first. They got closer. Before, um, before we move on, did you notice how, like, as soon as Cody started talking smack about their grandfathers, Rock instantly came in front and yeah. Roman immediately looked like the little brother. Yeah, he oh, did. Ro- he Rock did. is the final yeah. boss now. Yeah. 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 Rock, yeah. Is, was Rock is absolutely the final ridiculous. boss. Like I was watching that and then mm. the um, little backstage interview afterwards and I was like, Roman's on the sideline now. Like, but that's Rock's what here. sets up for after Mania for Rock and Roman to sort out yeah. their tribal yes. chief stuff, right? Yes. But this was perfect because the whole sort your shit out. You need to sort it out. You fix it. Or we're going to fix it, right? Or knock his teeth out of him. And then, now. as you said, Triple H throwing mad shade oh. at The Rock. Know your role. On SmackDown. Yeah. Oh, know so your good. role. Um, and if people don't it like doesn't it, doesn't matter doesn't what matter. you think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. And I've got, I'll, I'll leave my predictions that I spoke to you about until next week when we do our Elimination Chamber predictions. Mm-hmm. And because this is more of a WrestleMania prediction, but. Yep. Re- Triple H and Rock things not going away. That's. No, uh, absolutely not. It, on cooking. I've already seen people say. Instead of it being Cody and Seth versus Rock and Roman. Yeah. It'll be Triple H no. and Seth. He's not but medically clear. Triple H exactly. can't wrestle. Yeah, so there's going to be something with it. There's going to be something with it, but it won't be Triple Special H. Special oh guest God, referee. It. I've got it. Triple H can't wrestle because he's not medically cleared. Yep. So he has to reach back to one of his old friends that helped him out back in the past in the old DX days. x Park. Right? <laughs> right? Stole my joke, man. <laughs> I'm leaving. Real dog. <laughs> I've I've also heard rumors that um people would be wanting uh John Cena. I'll be I'll be surprised. Big, I'll be surprised if he doesn't show back up somehow. Well, they've only had they've had two WrestleMania matches, right? Yeah. Not three. They won one. Oh, three times in a lifetime. Oh, like, okay. Like I think the yeah, I think I think mm. it's organically setting up that it's Cody Seth. But if you don't do Seth if he is injured or you want to do something else, I could see Cody Cena. Mm. I could see Cody, maybe someone that you mentioned before, Ted. That's kind like of if that. I dropped a glass on your floor, it would yeah, break. Is shatter. that what you're talking about? The glass would shatter. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Okay, that's, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Look, I just love the the way they've set it up. The fact that Triple H is gone. We're a new WWE, and we said this before, mm. right? If this was back in the old WWE days, they would have just doubled down on Rock Roman and gone. We're gonna we're gonna dub the crowd out. We're gonna put the sound down, we'll, yeah. we'll pipe in our own sound. But finally they've gone, nah, you know what? We need to feed it to the people. Yeah. And this is how you get all the Rock's viewers and and followers to get involved by him slapping the taste out of Cody's mouth. Because even if Rock won't be in the match, all the people that follow The Rock will have seen that and want to know, well, The Rock's involved. Yeah, so what's he doing? Yeah. they're going to check it out. So uh, you know what? And props to Rock because he was copping a lot in those days from SmackDown Till that mm-hmm. press conference, you know, people, Rocky sucks. Everyone's saying he's stolen it from him. Like the memes online, everyone, he was getting so much hate. And I think he's seen it and gone, there's an opportunity for Hollywood. Trust the process. Yeah. hundred percent. So and we've got to let him cook. Man. I know you we're said, let him cook. you said it's a work. I don't think it's a work, but I think this is the smartest pivot WWE could do. Yep. They listened. They heard the Cody stuff. And I think Rock and Triple H and those in charge are smart enough to have seen that if we go this other story, we're going to cop shit. We're just going to – the crowd yeah. is not going to get involved. We can't do a Daniel Bryan thing again. We have to do How Cody do we now. Do it? And yeah. I think that the best way to lean into – I, I never thought – I didn't pick – like all the podcasts last week, all last week, I never picked Rock mm. Heel. I never picked Heel no. Rock coming in. No. Nah, as soon I didn't as they did it, I am so invested. Yeah. This is perfect. Well, Rock I, Heel's I, always I, been the best one. I want his Heel music back too. If the Hollywood. And I want his silk shirt with the sunnies back too, yeah. man. I want the silk shirt. I want the whole thing. If he can get it over those arms, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you see that shot when he came out on the ramp? I'm like, yeah. are those real, bro? Dude, dude, he's like, huge. Unit. Does he even lift? Seriously. 
Um, so let us know what you think about the press conference and everything that happens with WWE. What do you think? I think we've got our vote up on X. Is it still there? Oh, I was only up for the weekend. Oh, only up for the weekend. Oh, well, tell us in the comments. Do you think it is actually just going to be Cody versus Roman? Do you think it's going to be a triple threat? Do you think there will be a tag match on the first night? Do you think we're going to get very lucky in Perth and see a tag match or singles match? I just want Including, uh, yeah, come on, man. He's, got to, he's got to, just he's got to. Play all their entrance music. That's all I really want. To he's walk out, to. they can wave, walk back and fight. I'm sold. Oh, I'm so excited. So excited for Perth. Seriously. It's going to be so much fun. If you haven't gotten tickets for the chamber. Do it. Get them, get your butt over there, go pat a quokka, go have a beer at the Little Creatures Brewery, get to the EPW show that we're going yeah. to too. So anyone who's going to the EPW. Slex will be there, the new MCW oh, you will. champion. Hugh Beauty is going to be there too. Did yeah, you see that? I did say Hugh Beauty. Bit of line and length there yeah. on the old Wacker pitch, mate. That'll be good. Tuck's going to be there. The Tuckman. Yeah. Up the Tuck. Up, up the, the tuck. tuck. Oh, Caveman Ugg. He's there too. Rug. 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 So we're going to hopefully catch up with some of you boys, have a bit of a chat um, and uh, get some interviews. So looking forward to getting there. I, I'm seriously, I, I'm just fanboying right now oh, in look, my head thinking about how close we are. Despite, like, I know we're all super excited for Perth and the Elimination Chamber because we're going, that's super pumped. But everybody else, literally, strap in. Because yep, this, this road is, to WrestleMania oh, is going to be insane. It's going to be good. Rock and Roman going to show up on SmackDown next week. You've got Cody. You've got all these Elimination Chamber matches. Yep. You've got Seth talking stuff. It's just, it's going to go. And there's R-Truth. We haven't even talked about R-Truth. Nope. And how much everybody loves him. Haven't had a chance. He's going to win the chance. titles WrestleMania for sure. There's so much good going on. It is ridiculous. Strap in. It's going to be um, great. Look, seriously, guys. I If you had told me 12 months ago that, hey, number one, you're going to have a podcast. And number two, <laughs> You're going to be going to Perth to see the last premium live event before WrestleMania 40. I would have been like, shut the front door. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You are a fool. But it's true. It's happening. If you're going to be over there, hit us up. Let us know where you're going to be. Look for us. Come have a chat. Um, come have a drink. Um, come check out our new hats. Um, we'll see. If you become be the 100th subscriber, we might get you a free hat. Yeah. Come be so. on our show. But make sure you like, share, subscribe. Comment on this video. Daniel Danielson. Thank you, Ted. Radio Roddy Reese. I'm Booker Ted. Madison Square Garage. Pool table of relevancy. We aren't them, but we like to quote them. Bang, bang. Scissor game! Hey, fuck! <laughs>